Bear, we don't do the bare minimum, do we? Heck no. We're ambitious. <coughs> so we want to add another input to the form and display the value of that input alongside the name in the div or the paragraph. This, this is still borderline insulting. This is so easy, right? No. If you did find it hard, don't take that as an insult. I'm being silly. All right. If you don't know how to do that whole thing, break it down. We already did break it down. Add another input to the form. I think I can do that. So here's our first input. Do I need a whole new form? No. no. Just another input, right? So let's do it just like that. Now, it's good practice to type out every single character of the tags and all, but it's day two. We can start to get just a tiny bit lazy with our typing because we've got a lot more to type. So we can use something called Emmet, which is built into Visual Studio Code. If you're using Atom or something like that, uh, there are extensions available to add it. But what it means is I can hit P, and then I can hit my keyboard shortcut for Emmet expansion, and it makes the whole tag. Now watch this. Button? Oh, yeah, I can do button. Can I? Oh, shucks. Why do you hate me, Apple TV? What did I ever do to you? We'll be back real soon. Okay. Yep. So just type button, hit my keyboard shortcut. Type span keyboard shortcut. What's the keyboard shortcut? So um, by default, it is tab, but tab auto completes a whole bunch of stuff. So if I hit that too fast, I end up with something else. Um, so I have changed mine. And if you look at the website under the tool section yeah. with um, Visual Studio key bindings, if you happen to copy mine, I, ha I use control space. I was trying to copy yours, but I don't know if I pasted it correctly in the right spot. I'm not sure. Okay, we can look at it a little later. Control space is what I set it to. Okay. So it doesn't conflict with anything else because that's not assigned to anything else. So I'm going to do it that way. You don't have to. But there's not a lot of benefit to you seeing me type out every single letter. So label for what? Whatever my next input's going to be. You like age? Yeah. Sure. Take a stand. Be bold. So then the actual label goes in here. Then we want an input. Give it a name again of... It did not do this once in the morning. I yeah, by asking. Yeah. What the heck, man? All right, so we have our label. Now we have an input. We give the input a name, person age. Now we have type equals text here. But some, some people got a little fancy pants on us. Who, ha who, had the, who had the type number? Was it? Yeah? Yeah. What'd you do? Type equals number. Whoa. That's an HTML5 thing. If the browser doesn't support HTML5, it's just going to show up as text. No harm done. But if the browser does support HTML5, then it may display it a little differently. It may give us the up and down arrows. Uh, if you're using a mobile device, it'll probably give you a keyboard that makes sure that the numbers are shown. You don't have to hit a key to make the numbers there because it knows you're entering a number. Is it all true? Can it really be that easy? Oh, yeah. Let's type some text into here doesn't even let me. I have to type numbers. Plus, I got my little spinny thing. Yay. There we go. Add another input to the form. Display the value of that input alongside the name. We can handle that. The name is person age, right? So here's our handle submit. Do I need a whole new event listener and a new event handler function? No. 
Because what's when something happens, do something. When what happens? When the form is submitted. It's the same event, right? We don't need to add another one. When what happens? Well, right now we're just saying, when that happens, handle the submit. So we don't really need a new function unless we decide this just gets too darn complicated. But this is two lines. Not even two lines. One line and then we change an existing line. So we don't need a whole new function for this. So how do we get the name? Well, first we got the form, which was the target of the event. So we learned that in an event handler, which is the function that runs when the event fires, it's always going to pass in an event object as an argument, whether we list it up there or not, because JavaScript doesn't enforce the number of arguments. And we learned that the target of an event is the thing on which the event occurred. So if you click a button, the target is the button. You submit a form, the target is the form. So we just save that here. And the form has a property named person name because we gave the input a name. And inputs are empty elements. There's no closing tag. So they don't have text content or anything like that or inner HTML. They have a value, and that's what's typed in there. So it seems we should be able to say const age equals f dot age dot value. Div inner HTML. We got our paragraph opening tag plus name plus comma age plus age plus something like that. Mm -hmm. It's part of the string. Okay. I want there to be a comma after the person's name. Oh, okay. That's all. Yeah, but it's not a syntactic thing. So when I do this then, and I say, Chris, age 132. Sure. Oh, shucks. Cannot read property value of undefined. OK, OK. Let, let's pretend I don't remember what I did wrong here. Oh, shoot. Cannot read property value of undefined. Guess I better start just wildly troubleshooting with no focus. No, I should look at this. Line five, value. Cannot read property value of undefined. So whatever was before the value is undefined on line five. Line five, what do we call value on? F dot age. What's wrong with that? Yeah. It's person age. Don't panic. Read the error message. Personage. Refresh. Tappity tappity. Kinney. How old are you, Kenny? 20. 20. Kinney, age 20. It works. Yay. How much bonus credit we get for that? Super mega bonus credit. Oh, boy. Trade that in for a cash prize. You cannot trade that in for a cash prize. But it's pretty exciting. It makes me feel warm inside. And that's really that's the important thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And hey, we accomplished something. It works. Let's commit. First, I must add, because right now, Git doesn't know anything about our changes. Now it knows about our changes, but we haven't stuck a label on it. So we can commit it to stick a label on it so it ends up in our history for good. Then we want to put a message in there to make it clear what we accomplished in this commit for someone who's reading our work later. And remember, the developer you help by putting in a good message may be future you. So add age to the form and the stats. Now it is permanently in our repository but our repository is still on our laptop. If we push, then it'll be on GitHub too. Life is good. You may notice I clear my console a lot because it gets kind of hard to tell where I'm actually typing when there's that much on the screen. On a Mac, that would be Command K. On Windows or Linux, Control L. So Command K or Control L, and that works in the JavaScript console as well. Sometimes that gets loaded up with errors or logs or whatever. 
and you just want some sanity.